Okay, so two smooth disks, D and E. Uh, D weighs 200, E weighs 100. Uh, determine the largest horizontal force that can be applied uh, towards the center of disk E without causing disk D to move up the incline. Okay, so what does this mean uh, to without causing disk D to move up the incline? Meaning, I need to figure out the largest force P such that at that instant, D begins or attempts to begin to move up the slide. Now, the moment that disk D moves off the plane, I lose contact with the surface and therefore, therefore whatever force, normal force, acting on disk D from point B will go to zero at that moment. So that's the very first thing to recognize in this problem. And that would help us eliminate one of the unknowns in order to solve the problem for P, force P. So now the question becomes, how do we set this up? Well, uh, we start by a free body diagram. Right off the bat, if this problem can be done in many different ways. The easiest way is to split this problem into two separate free body diagrams one for disk d and one for disk e so let's see what forces act on d so i will draw d here and uh, this is point b here okay uh, now uh, we have the weight of course acting right at the center of mass I'll do the forces in red. So this is, uh, let's call it uh, whatever it is, 100 pounds. And we have the normal force uh, from the surface, which I just explained at that the moment B lifts up or attempts, is about to lift up, this guy goes to zero at B. And of course we have uh, point A here this is point A we have a normal force from this surface here let's call it NA and we also have the force uh, that uh, disk C pushes disk D with and uh, this force will be of course at an angle uh, let's call this force n prime. So, I said we'll put these forces in red. So, let me adjust this. And let's just say that let's call this R. Okay, so this is the reaction or the normal, normal force from disk E on disk D. Um, that is it. These are the forces. Uh, now, uh, let's go to disk C and do a free body diagram on C. Now, uh, right off the bat, you could see, so this is disk D here. You could see that there are two unknowns in this problem, uh, N, A, and R. Um, and so, and both of these have components in the X and in the Y. Uh, so, um, so, um, it's going to be hard to do this problem without actually figuring out the forces on the other disk C. So let's draw disk C. So disk C is slightly smaller. And uh, this is C. And uh, the forces here, I have P acting from the left. I have the weight right through the center of mass. And this guy weighs, uh, uh, sorry, this was 200 and this is 100. hundred. Okay, and uh, according to Newton's third law, I, I do have a, a force from D on E, and according to Newton's third law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So this R here will be the same exact R that acts on disk C or disk E. Uh, from this direction. 
also at an angle. So this would be the same R except in opposite direction. So those R's have the same magnitude opposite direction. Okay, um, and of course I have the normal force. Let's call this MC from the ground on disk C. Okay, well let's start with disk E. Uh, now we need to resolve, we know that uh, force R is neither in the X nor in the Y, it has two components. So I need to resolve that. In order to resolve that, I need to figure out the angle, okay? Uh, or the triangle, at least. Now, if I were to draw both disks again here to, so, to show you some geometry in which uh, I will be able to figure out the angles, uh, if I were to put two disks side by side, okay? Uh, okay, this looks good. Uh, this is the center here. Uh, they're supposed to be lying on the same ground here. And this is the center for the other disk. Now, if I were to connect these two lines, uh, I know that the radius of the big disk is 1.5, that of the first disk is 1. So this would be 1.5 and this would be 1, okay? Now, um, and I can make the triangle here. Now, of course, one question would be, uh, how do I know that this line will pass through the point of tangency, which is the middle, and therefore, how do I know that I'm able to say that this side is just 1.5 plus 1? Uh, what if the lines are like this? Okay. Well, that's a good question, but I'll show you with some geometry that can't be the case. And the reason being is because of this. Uh, if I have this disk here and I have a point of, and I have a tangent line going through here, uh, this radius has to be perpendicular to this line by definition, if this is a tangent line. And I know that those two disks are touching each other at one point. So I can make the same exact argument from the center of the second disk towards the tangent line, I know that it will also be perpendicular at the same point of tangency where they touch. And so if this point, if point A and point B form a line, and point C and point B form a line, therefore these three points have to be on the same line. So, it, so they can't be off the line. Okay. So clearing that out of the way, now we know that this side is two and a half, and uh, I can continue this little triangle here. So this is this point. Now I know the distance from here to here is one, and I know the distance from here down to here is one and a half, because it's a radius. So if I subtract these two, I get this little piece here to be a half, 0 0.5. So now, I do have a triangle. Let's make it a little bit bigger. I do have a triangle with 90 degrees, and I know this is two and a half, and I know that this is a half. So I can scale this triangle up and multiply by two. So this would be a one, and this would be a five. Now, Knowing two sides in a, in a 90 degree triangle, of course, guarantees you that you know everything about this triangle. You could figure out the third side using Pythagorean theorem, 25 minus 1 is 24. So this side would be 24, and therefore I could use sines and cosines. Now the reason that this is important, because this force R that I called here actually lies on this side. It's pushing, so disk D pushing disk E along this along the hypotenuse of this triangle, and disk E pushes on disk D also according to this triangle because this is the uh, line of contact of the force where the uh, between the two disks. Okay, so that means uh, let's write out. So if I'm going to work off uh, this angle here, uh, I. I know now that I do have a triangle on this force, on either one of these two forces, with 
uh, sides 1 5 and square root 24 okay so uh, that simplifies the problem greatly so if I start with disk E Uh, this thing here froze on me. Give me a moment, please. Okay, so uh, uh, I copied the figure below so I can work underneath so you can see my. Uh, free body diagram now that I got the pad back so I will start with disk E okay and uh, I will take my x-axis as usual to be to the right and the y-axis upwards and uh, this is an equilibrium problem because uh, nothing is moving and we are at the point where the disk is about to move but had not moved yet therefore the acceleration is zero and uh, conditions of equilibrium is some forces in the x equals zero. So I will start with that on disk E. So what are the forces on disk E? Well, I have P acting to the left. So that's uh, minus P. And then uh, I have the x component of force R. Uh, the x component is going to the right. So this is plus R. Now uh, for the x component, I need uh, cosine the angle. Cosine, uh, if, if I call this angle here alpha, which is the same angle I'm going to use there, uh, cosine alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse, so this would be square root 24 over 5 equals 0. So this is the first equation, which tells me that P is square root 24 over 5 not enough to solve this is th there's two unknowns here we'll come back to this let's box it and move on to forces in the y so sum of forces in the y equals 0 and the forces in the y on disk e are 100 going down so this is minus 100 we have the normal and c from the ground on disk c and we have the y component of force r which will be minus negative because it's going down and now I will use uh, R times sine angle alpha sine angle alpha is 1 over 5 since it's the Y component and uh, this has to equal 0 of course there's a third unknown here and C so again this equation is not enough to solve the problem so uh, let's just simplify it and move on um, so we have NC minus r over 5 equals 100 uh, you could see that I have two equations but I have three unknowns so that's why I do need to go to disk D to get more equations so now let's go on to disk D so disk D And I will do the same exact thing. So now I will take the sum of the forces in the x to equal 0, conditions of equilibrium. There is no acceleration. So all the forces uh, in, in every dimension are 0. So what are the forces in the x? Uh, if I look at uh, disk D, uh, disk uh, D, I have, OK. So here I have another uh, force, uh, which also needs components. Uh, but this one should be easy to resolve because the figure told us that we have a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Uh, so uh, 3, 4, 5, uh, which means uh, this force here, if I resolve into components, uh, this is, this here is going up like this. Now, this is a 3, 4, 5, according to the figure. So this triangle here is uh, 3, 4, 5. This is, of course, 90 degrees. Now, uh, you could see that uh, this is the NAX. 
and this is the NAY and this is 90 degrees now uh, you could see that uh, this triangle is just flipped sideways so uh, uh, since these two lines here are pa so we have uh, this is this guy here is perpendicular to this guy of course because the first one is vertical the second one is horizontal where an ax is and uh, we also have uh, uh, so these two are uh, perpendicular and of course uh, this guy here is perpendicular to this guy the reason being is because normal force always acts at a 90 degree angle and uh, if you look at the uh, these two sides on the upper triangle if this is alpha between them meaning this angle here is alpha therefore the angle here has to also be alpha and uh, uh, I could see from the triangle the 3 4 5 triangle that uh, sine alpha here I'll write it on the side sine alpha is 3 over 5 and uh, cosine alpha is 4 over 5 okay that should do it and uh, so now I can resolve my NA into uh, two components so some forces in the X equals 0 so I have NA times cosine which is uh, NA cosine alpha which is 4 over 5 heading to the right so that's positive uh, I do have uh, on disk D the R again uh, it's going to be the same R uh, but except the dimensions are reversed so now the X component goes left and the Y component goes up so let me not mess this diagram since I've already showed you now so this will be minus R times the same exact argument as before I'm gonna use cosine the angle which is it's the same exact angle uh, square root 24 over 5 Uh, that's it and this should equal to zero so now I have my third equation uh, I could just uh, multiply by 5 and I will get 4 and a equals square root 24 R so that's another equation so now how many equations do we have we have uh, three equations and we have uh, P R and C and NA that's four unknowns which means I need another equation so I will go in the Y so some forces in the Y equals zero so uh, what are the forces in the Y well I have the Y component of NA that's NA sine alpha sine alpha will be 3 over 5 acting up so that's positive minus the weight of uh, disk D which is 200 Uh, I have NB acting up plus NB but we've already said that the moment it's gonna move lo it loses contact with the surface and this guy goes to zero this is what gives you the maximum P that we are calculating and uh, then uh, I still have the uh, Y component of force R which is uh, upwards and that's sine the angle so plus R sine the angle is 1 over 5 and that should equal 0 okay uh, so uh, that this was an A one second uh, this was an A so so now uh, multiply by 5 I will get 3 and A plus R equals 200 by 5 is a thousand so now I have four equations and four unknowns and this hopefully should be enough to solve for P uh, so um, uh, it's now the problem is a matter of algebra uh, I am looking for P uh, so uh, from this equation here uh, you could use any way you want elimination substitution manipulation you name it 
so from this guy here I know that R is equal to 5p over root 24 I can take this R plug it here and so I will get uh, uh, if I do that I will get NC let's change the color I will get NC so now I'm I'm an equation 2 let's label these equations so this was equation 1 2 3 4 okay so now I'm in equation 2 I will replace R with what I have uh, R turned out to be 5p over root 24 and uh, this is divided by 5 so those fives can go away and this has to equal 100 I'm after P so I will try to manipulate things in such a way that P remains um, and I can solve for it um, so uh, this is uh, NC uh, one second which one was NC yeah NC was that guy there um, okay and then uh, the third let's go to the third equation uh, 4 and a equals square root 24 and we already said that r is 5p over root 24 5p over square root 24 yep that's what I solved from the first equation so these guys go away and I get uh, n a to equal 5p over 4 I can take this and I can plug it in number 4 um, uh, plug in 4 and if I replace I could take equations 3 and 4 uh, these are two equations in NA and R and I can solve for them I'll come back to this in a second so now I will take 3 and 4 so uh, here we have uh, uh, 3 and so I will replace uh, NA with so I will go to 4 and I will replace NA from equation 3 with square root 24 R over uh, 4 that's NA that's solving for NA from equation 3 plus R equal a thousand this is one equation in R so R will equal 1000 over uh, 3 square root 24 over 4 plus 1 factoring out R and, uh, and solving for it so if I punch this on my calculator here I will get uh, do the calculation Two hundred and thirteen point nine point nine pounds. So that's R. Now knowing R, I could find an A. And once I have an A, I can plug it here and find P. So if I plug this, plug in either three or four, probably three is easier. So plug in three or actually just plug uh, yeah plug in 3 so NA would be square root 24 R over 4 NA would be square root 24 R over 4 I know R so square root 24 over 4 times 213.9 and that should get me Two hundred and sixty two pounds now I can take this and plug it here and I can find P so uh, 4 and a equals 5 P so P equals 4 and a divided by 5 so 4 
times 262 divided by 5 that should get us Two oh nine point six. So P max equals two hundred and nine point six pounds. This is what the question is asking for. And of course, uh, had you want to, uh, you could solve for the fourth unknown because now we know everything. Uh, if you need uh, uh, what's the remaining NC, uh, NC, I could just. Uh, uh, plug it in equation 2 P and I can find NC might as well although the question didn't ask for it but we could find it uh, we do have a relationship connecting R also connecting R and NC I could plug it in 2 NC is 100 plus R over 5 uh, what was it uh, 100 plus R over 5 R is uh, R turned out to be did we find R yeah 213.9 so NC turns out to be uh, hundred and forty two point eight pounds the question only asked for P uh, but I did go ahead and find all the remaining unknowns thank you I hope this helps please don't forget to comment subscribe uh, and uh, um, uh, and like uh, I am using a new software here Snagit for recording so uh, you guys if you want let me know how the audio uh, the view the screen capture all was i'm i'm trying this out uh, this is my uh, uh, my first time trying out this this video and i hope uh, it will turn out to be good the clo uh, the, looks like the, it's not liking the uh, the uh, one note because it closed on me and as you can see i've i've already solved for nc and it took my my answer away anyways it turned out to be 142.8 pounds just to uh, rewrite it uh, that does it